Hello, hello. Welcome to Eclipse Season. Holy shit. So, there is a lot going on, even for right now. Um, really, since Trump got elected, it's been nonstop freak out on the collective. Um, uh, yeah. And it hasn't stopped. There's been a change in the field, though, as we mourn yet another black man's death, George Floyd. Oh, and that my caddy guy who got shot, too. I mean, God, there's... It's moving really fast, too. Um, shit. And... You know, there's a lot of anger, especially in the black community and in the collective that I am tapped into. I can feel that anger coming in. And this is a righteous anger of social justice, of bringing justice to the forefront. And we need that right now. And you, you know, if you're a white person, mostly I'm talking to white people right now when I'm talking about what you can do to become an ally, what you can do to become an abolitionist of racism, of anti being an anti-racist. <clears throat> Got the privilege to step back. Black people don't have that privilege. They don't ever have that privilege. Every day they go out and they're black. They don't, they just can't not deal with it. And we as white people need to remember that. And we need to honor their anger <clears throat> because, sorry, not... If you're not angry about people dying, about black people being targeted, that white people drive around with guns and think they can get out of their vehicles and shoot black joggers, if you're not angry about that, because you're too buried that, oh my God, I'm going to lower my vibe, you, got, you nearly need to look at, look at your white privilege <clears throat> and your racism and your biases. We as white people need to know this. We need to know where our flaws are in regard to race. And I feel like this eclipse season has two very strong aspects. One is the internal aspect, especially for people who need to do the work. Do the freaking work. It's worth it. I've been doing the work about my bias, my racism. Since I was a teenager, is I realized that the religious prejudice I faced as a teen in 1980s Salt Lake City, Utah, was a tiniest, tiniest taste of what black people, Latinx, people of color, Asians, go through every fucking day. The tiniest Yoda. Is I experienced with Rachel with religious prejudice. Tiniest bit. I was still white. I could still blend in in homogenous Salt Lake City, Utah of the 1980s because I'm white. It's once sometimes throughout that period, once they found out I was Mormon, there was some weird shit. And one of my biases, yes, one of my main biases is towards the Mormon church still to the LDS faith for how they tell people, talk to people about non-members of people of other faith. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> it, right now, we're dealing with African-American populations, black people who are being targeted and killed, not just by police anymore, but by citizens. And this is not okay. So you have this external aspect, and you also have this internal aspect, if you're a white person, because you need to deal with this. And the external is how do you move, once you've started to process that bias and your racism, how you move out of that and into allyship. It's a process, you know, don't just be like, oh yeah, I did the blackout Tuesday, it's so awesome, give me a cookie. Do not expect a reward. Do not expect a reward for this, for doing the right thing. 
you do it because it's right. I worked in nonprofits after I got up, after my second federal run at college where I graduated, and I was working with very closely with one lady, and I was working for the Catholics at the time, and you know she asked me why I didn't identify as um, Christian. I was raised Lutheran, and like I don't. I, as far as I'm, I don't know, Jesus Christ died for my sins. I don't know. I don't really feel that way. It's not my basic tenet of belief that this dude died for my sins. And I told her that. And she went, oh. And she's like, well, why do you do this work? Because part of being a good Catholic is doing good works. And I'm like, but it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to work with refugees that need help resettling in this country to find safety and security. It's the right thing. Why do I need a God to tell me that? Why can't I just as a person be that? But, okay. So, now that we got that part of eclipse season out of the way, do the work, people. It's worth it. And you will always be doing the work. Is the tr If anyone says you they're done with it, they did the work. They haven't. They're not done. They're already into, into denying it. And if you're thinking, people just need to think really good thoughts, and your racism's going to go away? No. We have to change the systems. We have to change the practices. We have to change the school systems and how we teach people. I didn't get nothing in the 70s and 80s. By the time I made it to my second round of college, black people, women, we all got a paragraph. I think Native Americans might have been on the same half page, too. We all got like these really small paragraphs on the same page, and I think there was a picture on top, too. So it wasn't even a full page. So let's get into the reading. So we got a full moon, lunar eclipse. I can't remember which freaking moon this is. And the well and went a wall. Hmm. Yeah, the Llewellyn's calendar. I found it. Hold on. It's big. It is hiding all the time. Make sure I'm in the right month. So that is. I'm not very good at astrology. Sagittarius. I was remembered correctly. So it looks like we're in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Full moon Sagittarius. Lunar eclipse. And a whole lot going down. Doing the inner work right now can help you prepare to do the outer work and everyone is starting in a different spot with their work so you gotta start where you are you can start where I am you can say okay I you can get ideas from you know people who are further down, down the line take the time to do some research on your own and figure out what you need to work on where you need to go for yourself and this internal work is going to yeah the door's probably going to go back and forth because windows are open because it's summertime here <sighs> where you need to do the work do the research first don't don't go asking black people hey what should i do not cool go go start your own research first and take it from there. There's lots of good resources. I'll link a blog post I just wrote about using your white privilege to do some good. Yeah, because like right now, there's a young teenage girl who is like my freaking hero who just ran out in front of a black guy so the police wouldn't like hit him and shoot him and gas him. She put her white body in front of him to protect him. Because it's your white privilege that you're less likely to get the shit beat out of you by a cop than a black person. And I'm going to go shut this. It's like I have to have the door open because cats and the windows are open so it's blowing around. And I have the TV on downstairs because cats. If we keep the TV on, they tend to be more chill. So, okay, interesting. So our guide card for this full moon in Sagittarius with a lunar eclipse is the angel Callio and polychrome Jasper. 
Sacred Play. So I am using the um, 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 not Sacred Rebels, Crystal Mandala Oracle, and the Legacy of the Divine Tarot today. So Sacred Play. What is Sacred Play? How do we define this? What is play? And I feel like this is, so there's level playing field is being set over and over ahead. How can we all be able to play safely? How do we work towards a society for the betterment of all of us? Work towards a society that supports every single one of us equally so that we can be sacred, that we can go out there and play. That all of us, black people, Asians, Latinx, Native Americans, all can feel this. How can we all feel sacred? And I feel like play in this context is the aspect of play, of having fun and enjoyment, and also this aspect of how does the sacred come into play in our lives and how do we use that sacredness? Being an anti-racist is a spiritual practice. How can that be part of yours? How does that become sacred? How do you play into that in your daily life, in your spiritual life, in your ritual, in your learning about your spirituality, if you're a witch, pagan, new age type person, there is a lot of that is based on 19th century work or older. 19th century works are incredibly racist. Um, God, I have to apologize all those texts. <laughs> Malinowski's Sex Life of Savages. Oh my God. There's the these stere he even has the stereotypical white male in kind of like the safari jungle gear with his leg, with one leg, foot on a like um, log, looking all macho. I was like, holy shit, he even has that. Um, you know, texts that don't bother to get the names right for Native Americans in a picture. And had, in the shop I worked in, he had a book. And go is down from the crow, and he's like, this is like my great uncle and this is this person and this is first person and the white people had it bothered to get the names right it didn't matter to them so be aware of where that comes in and how that influence is the people you follow the people you learn from how does the sacred play in I mean, it's like play in english can it has so many different connotations that we can use with this? How does something play into it and influence you? How does something play and bring joy for all of us? How are you defining play? How can we all be safe to feel sacred play? So, okay, next two cards. Knight of Cups and Faith. Faith in this um, legacy of the Divine Tarot is the Hierophant. So, Nine of Cups. Watery emotions everywhere. We're just going to... There's a big ebb and flow. You can kind of feel this flowing energy that keeps coming in. comes in and then it kind of back out. But it, it keeps moving. There is a flow going on right now in all the energy that it's going down. And it's not the energy you want to fight. Um, th th how do I explain this? This this is the the Knight of Cups is representing the energy you want to support. This is not the energy of people being racist. And things like that. This is the energy of the people fighting the racists. This is the anti-racists. This is the black people. This is the energy of that movement. Of how are we being inspired to change. To improve the world. 
create new systems that do not oppress people. Because, <laughs> you know, the thing is, when at this level of oppression we're at in the United States, you're seeing pictures that, you know, typically you'd be like, that's a different country. Washington Monument with military surrounding it. It's, it's not who we want to be. And this is that energy. It's like, this is like, we know who we don't want to be. We may not know exactly who we want to be when we get to the other side of this because there's a lot that needs to be dealt with. There's a lot that needs to change. There's a lot of systems that need to become anti-racist. And, wow, yeah, I mean, just seriously, support this energy in your life, how it's showing up. So the next one is faith. And this would correspond to the hair font in other decks. And I feel like this is the faith and the hope that we keep going. That a lot of people can interpret this card as the status quo of dogma and doctrine. And really for me, the epitome of the hair font is Yoda. He gives you the information. He teaches you. He gives you skills. And he lets you do what you will with those skills. Does he say, no, Luke, you can't go? No, no. He's like, he's like, please. He's like, don't go. This isn't a good idea. Luke manages to struggle through the consequences of his going to save his friends. And one of those consequences coming back and having you to being on his deathbed, of losing his teacher, who he spent time saving his friends, missing out on learning, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, Yoda, as the Hierophant, offered him up knowledge and then let him do what he will with that knowledge. How can he use it? And I feel like that's it. We got to have that faith. We got to have the knowledge. How do we change things? What can we start building? We got to have the ideas to build new systems. Uh, we got to have that faith. we got to have that hope. And I feel like that's what this faith card is the coming together of the many. The coming together of many different people, of many different faiths, ethnicities, beliefs, queer, trans, bi, asexual, whatever, everyone. We need to come together and make the changes. And unfortunately, often those changes in the United States are initiated by violence. Stonewall was not a happy gay parade. John Lewis didn't have a good day. And he, I mean, they, you know, when they almost killed John Lewis during the Civil Rights Movement, I mean, we have 400 years of black oppression in the U.S. And around 158 of those with black people being allegedly free. And I feel like if we're not get, willing to do the work this eclipse season to apply ourselves to the world, especially white people, we're failing. So, do it. That's what I suggest. Be the intersection. The more I think about intersections as I get older, the more important they are to, to see and to understand, to know what those intersections are in your life. Uh, you know, and some people are going to have more than others. You know, I'm cisgendered, bisexual person. I'm white. I identify as female. Um, you know, it, it just is. It's not, you know, those are my intersections. Those things that come into my life and really it's like, I don't really talk about being bisexual because it's just kind of like being a reader to me. It's always been there. 
and I don't really think about it, and my parents don't care. I was the kid that brought home gay kids who got kicked out of their house, so. Um, but I'm realizing as I get older that that intersection of my sexuality is really more important than I ever thought it was. Or really felt it was. I mean, it just is. It's just who I'm part of. And it just is. Um, and maybe that's because I do have acceptance from my parents as a witch, as, as just being me. Um, so it was just whatever in my life. It's just accepted. There is a, yeah. It's like um, Wes Johnson. This is going to be a really long reading. <laughs> I just, I have like two or three segments. Like in high school, Wes Johnson, were, like one of the worst vice principals ever. <sighs> um, yeah. He told my parents if I was just be like everyone else and they're like, wait a minute, we're trying to raise an independent adult who can think for herself. And not just be a lemming going over the cliff. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to ramble. But the intersections, intersections are important. Where are your intersections? Who can you, who do you intersect with on a daily basis? Are you following people who are black, people of color, LGBTQ? Do you follow any trans people? Bi, queer. Where do your intersections come from? Where are they? And if you're lacking them, how can you find them? So let's get a um, card here. Speak truth. Ha huh, ha. Huh. So, speak truth. Speak out. Silence implies that, yeah, it's like, if you're silent, you're complicit at this point. You know, everyone's voice is going to sound different. It's going to take shape differently. Um, my guides have been very clear. I've been very clear in my heart right now that this is it. I'm going to be mouthy. I've done my processing. And white people, <laughs> you get upset about what I'm saying. You really need to look at that. So, okay, let's go back to our guide card, Sacred Play. This is the action in the world. It's also how do we bring the sacred into play for everyone? How can we all have this? Because if we all have this form of sacred play, play oh, it's going to be a good world. Knight of Cups. It's the really strong emotions, the anchor, the action. Everything that's happening right now is embodied in this Knight of Cups. And it may feel like a tidal wave running you over, but go with it. Write it. Use it. Put it to work for yourself because faith is here and it resides within us and our actions. So go out there and vote, people. I voted... And someone I actually like won a primary. <laughs> I think two people did. I was like, and when I vote, you know what I look for? I look for intersections. It's like I was looking at one guy. And I'm like, yeah, you're okay. When I vote for you. And then I got to his body and he's like, Salish. I'm like, mm. he just, he gave me the intersection I was looking for. He's a Native American. I'm voting for him. I tend, I look for those intersections. Women. People of color, Native American, black, whatever it is, bi, queer, blah, 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 trans, all those things. Look for those intersections. Because in faith, we can bring hope to everybody. And we can speak our truth and feel safe to speak our truths, which is very important right now. To have that safety built into systems from the bottom down and the bottom up and everywhere in between. Okay, I know this is a really long one, but go out there and be the love in the world. This, speaking out and being anti-racist, is part of being the love. It is part of a spiritual practice. How are you going to show up today? Have a wonderful day, and go out there and be the love. And, ooh, okay, here we got two more eclipses to make it through. I know we can do it. Bye-bye.